Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at five easy ways to create a data entry form for Excel. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. Now let's get started. So the first method we're going to take a look at for a data entry form is actually just an Excel table. So this might be a simple solution and all you really need. So an Excel table is a container for your data. So it's going to give you a nice defined area for uh, data input, as well as a couple other nice features that we'll take a look at that work well for data entry. So here I've got some contact data. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this into an Excel table. So we just need to select any cell inside our data. And then we can go up to the insert tab and use the table command here. That's going to open up this create table dialog box. Now I'm just going to hit cancel because we also have a keyboard shortcut. So control T is going to do the same thing. Now our data here has column headers. So the first row here has names that indicate what type of data is in each column. So we're going to check this box here. My table has headers because we got those column headers in the first row. Let's press OK. And here's our Excel table. And our data is contained inside that Excel table. Now the first thing we should do is rename our table. So up in the Table Tools Design tab, we can rename our table. And press Enter. And there's a whole host of other options here for customizing your table. So potentially you might want to change the table style. There's many options here. I like this black and gray one. So let's use that. And now we can use this as a data entry form. So if we want to add new data to our contacts, then all we need to do is start typing just below the table. And now instead of pressing enter, because enter is going to take our active cell cursor uh, one cell below, what we're going to do is use the tab key instead. So if I press tab, then that's going to take my active cell cursor one cell to the right and set me up to enter my next piece of data. And then when we're in the last column of our table, if we press tab again, that's actually going to bring our active cell cursor down one row and start us off in the first column again. So this is perfect for data entry. If we've got a couple of rows to enter, then just keep pressing tab key when you're entering your data. Another nice benefit is that when this set of data becomes really large and you scroll down then you can actually still see those column headers so they'll remain visible when you're scrolling down far into your sheet so depending on your data entry needs this might be a perfect solution for you it's pretty simple but it gets the job done the next method we're going to take a look at is a form command in Excel. And this is actually kind of a hidden command, so you're not going to find it in the ribbon here. It's only available as a command in the Quick Access Toolbar. So here up here is our Quick Access Toolbar. And if we want to add commands in here, we can right click anywhere and choose Customize the Quick Access Toolbar. And that's going to open up Excel Options. And here's a list of some commands here. And right now we're filtered on popular commands. We can choose all commands. And then we get a list of all the available commands in Excel. And if we just click in here and press F on our keyboard, that's going to take us down to where the commands starting with F start. And we can scroll down until we find our form right here. And then we can add that into our quick access toolbar and press OK. And then here we can see that we now have a form command in our quick access toolbar. And all we need to do to use this is just make sure we have a cell in our data selected and then click on that. 
and we're going to get a data entry form here. So here you can see the, the records displaying that I've already got, and we can scroll through those with the find previous and find next button. And we can also delete records. So let's delete this record for Stanley maybe and press OK. And you can see that that deletes the record from our table. We can also add new records. So if we click on new and we can start adding a record here. And again, press tab to go into the next field. And once we've got that filled out, we can click new again, and that's going to add the record into our table. Another handy feature with this data entry form is that we can actually search for records based on a given criteria. So we can click on the criteria button, and then we can add our search criteria here. And then we can press find previous or find next to find that record. And here you go. Here's the record with the last name McDougall. And you can see that that is not case sensitive either. So I was able to find uh, this record. So Excel actually has a data entry form command. We just need to add it into the quick access toolbar to use it. The next method we're going to take a look at is using Microsoft Forms. So we can actually connect our Microsoft Forms to an Excel spreadsheet. And to do that, we just need to open up either OneDrive or SharePoint. And so I've got OneDrive opened up here on a folder, my demo folder. And if I go up to the left corner here and click on new, then that's going to allow me to add in new documents or workbooks, etc. But there's actually an option here to add a form for Excel. So if I click on that, then that's going to create an Excel document for me. So let's name that contacts and create that. And then it's actually going to open up Microsoft Forms for me with a new blank form. And also if I check out my OneDrive, I've got that Excel spreadsheet here. So this spreadsheet is now connected with this form here and we can create our form. So we've got various choices of what kinds of inputs we can add also got some choices here. Uh, for us, we're just going to be adding text fields. So let's add a, a first name text field. And here we have the option to make this a required field. So let's do that. Again, we're just going to go through and add all the fields that we need. So we have all the fields that we want in our data entry form. And the other thing that we can do is if we go up here to the top right corner, we have some extra settings. And let's go to settings here. And this is where we can actually allow outside users to do data entry into our Excel spreadsheet. So by default, this is only people in our organization can respond. So only people in our Office 365 tenant will be able to fill out this form right now. But we can select that anyone with the link can respond. And then all we need to do is share this. And so we can get our link to share that. Let's copy that and open it in our browser here. So let's fill this out. And now we can submit our data and let's check out our Excel workbook. Let's open that up. And here's the data from the form that we just submitted. So there's some fields here to do with 
the form. So Microsoft form has some fields that it will fill in. And here's our actual data starting here in column F. So here's the record that I just submitted. And there it is in our Excel table in Excel. So Microsoft Forms can also be a pretty quick and easy way to create a data entry form. And this will also allow you to share the data entry to outside users. Now the next method we're going to take a look at is using a Power Apps for our data entry form. So if we head over to powerapps.microsoft.com and sign in with our Office 365 account, then in the home screen of the Power Apps portal, we actually have options to start a Power App from data. So we're going to create an app based on our Excel data. And my Excel sheet is in a OneDrive folder. So let's select that. And so it's in a folder here. And in general, so here's my Excel sheet with my contact table. So Power Apps is only going to be able to work with data in an Excel table. So make sure you have your data inside a table in your Excel workbook first. And then those tables are gonna show up here. So here I'm gonna choose my contact table and let's connect. And now Power Apps is going to build an app for us based on that data. So this builds a three screen app for us. So we have a screen where we can browse our data or we can see an individual record here and we can also edit records as well. Let's just go up to the file tab and save this. And let's go back. And now we'll be able to use this contact form on any mobile device that has the Power Apps app installed on it. Or we can also use it from a browser. So let's just close this. And let's head back to the Power Apps home screen. And that should be listed now in our apps. So here it is, my contacts data form. And let's click on these three dots here and go to the details. And that's where we can find the web link. So if we wanna use this in a browser, we can just copy this and paste it in there. Let's check that out. And it looks like I actually need to close my Excel workbook. So let's do that. Let's save that and close our Excel workbook. And let's refresh that. So here's all the records in our table currently. And we can search things here. So. Here's the record for John. And we can select records, so I can just click on this arrow here, and that's gonna allow me to view the full record here. Let's go back. We can also add new records. Let's add that record in. And let's just delete our search item there. And here's our new record. And now if I open up our Excel spreadsheet, we should see that in our data.
So here's the new record that we added. And Power Apps has also added a unique identifier column. So there's this Power Apps ID column, and that's how Power Apps is going to identify each of these records in our data. So that's how we can create a data entry form for Excel using Power Apps. So Power Apps allows us to take a table of data and then Power Apps is going to automatically build a app for us based on that data. The next method we're going to take a look at is using Power Automate to create a form for our Excel data entry. Now Power Automate is a service that allows us to automate tasks between different online services, but we can't actually create a data entry form with it. So first, we just need to head over to flow.microsoft.com and sign in. And we can come over to the navigation here and create a new flow. And the type of flow that we want to create is an instant flow. So we're going to create a flow that's triggered from a button. And first, we just need to name that flow. So let's call it Excel Data Entry. And the trigger for this flow that we want is actually the first one here, manually trigger a flow. Let's create that. So every flow starts with some sort of trigger and then has various actions after that trigger. And so the first object here is our trigger, manually trigger a flow. If we click on that and expand it, we actually see this option to add inputs. So this is how we're going to create our data entry form. And we have various options, so we can add text inputs, a yes and no field. We can actually attach files or have an email address input. And now this is an email address from our Office 365. So we're actually going to be using the text input for our email purposes because we want to add email addresses from outside of our tenant. We also have a number fields and dates possible. All our inputs are going to be text. Let's add those in. I'm just going to add a couple here. And then we can name our inputs. And then each input here has some potential options. So if we click on that, we have the option to make it a drop down list or add multi select list options. And we can also make the field an optional input, but we're just going to leave everything as is. And then the next thing we need to do is actually take that data that we input and add it into Excel. So we're going to add an action and we're going to search for Excel. Now my office 365 is a business account. So I'm going to use Excel online for business. And the action we want to perform is we want to add a row into a table. So let's select that. And then we just need to select what Excel workbook and table we want to add data into. And we can use these drop down lists here. So mine's in OneDrive for business and OneDrive. And here it is. And once we select that workbook, then we can select the table in that workbook. So we had ours named contacts. And once we select our table, then all the fields in that table are going to appear here. Now, what we want to populate in this is actually inputs from our trigger up here. And we can do that with what's called dynamic content. So when we click into any of these fields here, we should see a pop up here for our dynamic content. If we don't see that, we can click on the button here. And then we just need to add those into our field. So here I want the first name. So let's add the first name and the last name. And the email and city name. 
and the country. And we can save that. So that's all we need to do. We just need to take the data that we create from this trigger and add it into our Excel workbook. Let's save that. And if we go back to our flows, so let's go to my flows. And here's the one I created. I actually had one named Excel data entry. So it's gone ahead and created Excel data entry two. And from here we can play this. So let's run it. And here's our data entry form. First, we might need to sign into some things. So I need to sign into my Excel online. Let's continue. And here's our data entry. So let's add a record. We can run that flow. And let's just click on this and see if it's run. So here we can see in the run history that it just ran. And if I click on that, then we can see that it ran successfully. And here's the different steps. So here that took zero seconds. And that took two seconds. And here's the data that we input. And let's actually just go over to Excel and check that out. So here is the record that we just added. So that's how we can use Power Automate as a data entry form for our Excel workbooks. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future videos like this one. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.